Sometimes we read for the, stand for the gospel, sometimes we don't. I'm not going to have you stand right now. Short verse, two verses from the second chapter of Luke's gospel. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable now <clears throat> in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Years ago now, my wife and I and our boys um, worshipped one Sunday morning at a large evangelical megachurch here in the Twin Cities because it was the church home at that time for my sister and her family. Um, it would will never be their church home again because after my older niece came out after college their theology and their interpretation of scripture changed quite substantially but that's another story for a different time that morning their worship leader <clears throat> um, with a very big and very good <clears throat> contemporary band and group of singers behind him welcomed us all with a huge smile and hyped up energy. Now a smile and energy is good, <clears throat> but to me this was over the top. I don't remember his actual words, maybe it was something about how great it is um, to know Jesus and, or what a fantastic day is, God is good all the time, but it was to me way over the top and I had a negative reaction to it. I don't know if his presence, it's not like you Jennifer, I don't know if he, his thing was forced or if that's really the way he felt and is totally sincere, but it just bugged me. He's probably a good guy with a genuine faith and all that, and I don't believe I'm a bad person or that bad of a person. I don't believe I'm a violent person, but I had a bad thought. I had a bad thought, and my bad thought that part of me wanted to backhand him. to stop all of that forced hype. I really reacted against it. Because I know, it, it, to me it felt like salt in the wound. If he was completely high on Jesus and that day and everything was going his way, good for him. But you know what? It, to me it was like pouring salt in the wound because a whole lot of people, when we come to church on Sunday morning, are in all kinds of different places, right? And we are in all kinds of different moods, including the pastor and his or her spouse and kids, including the music director and his or her spouse and kids. I know how it goes as a pastor. I'm there. You know, my wife used to show up and not, the family wasn't necessarily in a good mood. <clears throat> the struggle to get kids ready, family tensions, sibling conflicts. <clears throat> Was that music director experiencing joy that morning? Perhaps he was. <clears throat> Perhaps he was, but you can't impose that on anyone else. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is going here a little bit. <clears throat> Reload. <Yep. clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> it's punishment for my violent thoughts. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm being honest about it. What do you think? <clears throat> is joy the same thing as happiness? Let's face it, some people overall are just happier than other people, right? And some appear to be, thank you Maria, some appear to be happier, but if we saw inside, nah, they ain't as happy as they project. But here again, truth be told, some of us are more fortunate than other people. And we are more happy or less happy due to many things beyond our control, our brain chemistry, our personalities wired since birth, and what our particular life experiences or traumas have been. I really believe that all of us experience too much heartache, too much pain, 
Too much suffering sometimes in this life. Some of us more than others. Some of us way more than our fair share, as if there is such a thing. Some of us struggle with anxiety and or depression. And we seek help through therapy, through counseling, learning, coping techniques, skills, through medication. But sometimes there's just too much stress in our lives, too much tension, too much conflict. So being happy all the time is virtually impossible for most of us. It's not realistic, it's not attainable. To me, joy is not the same as happiness. <clears throat> I think joy is something deeper, something that sustains us, maybe more like an inner strength or an inner peace that lifts our spirits enough to get us through today, to bring us through to tomorrow. <clears throat> Someone once asked an older person who experienced a lot of hardship in his life how it was that he survived it all and managed to maintain a relatively positive perspective on life. He said, I've got a cup full of joy. I've got a cup full of joy. In other words, <clears throat> it wasn't about a great big quantity of joy. It wasn't about being happy all the time in the face of things that bring us anything but happiness. It was about a small but potent reserve, inner reserve he called joy that managed to sustain him. It's in this way that I think you and I can experience joy even in the midst of difficulties that we face and some of the sufferings we have to walk through. I regard joy as a gift. We don't give it to ourselves. We can't, you know, figure out a formula and manufacture it. It's a gift and it's a divine one at that. And if joy has a spiritual source, then that's very interesting in light of where our culture is today. There's a recent study from the Pew Research Center that shows spirituality and faith now fall fourth on the list in the sources of things that give meaning to the lives of Americans. First on the list is family, 69%. That's what number one what gives their lives meaning. Second on the list is career, 34%. Third on the list is money, 23% of Americans. That's kind of number one that gives my life meaning. Spirituality and faith fall forth after money at 23%. Is joy tied to what me gives meaning to our lives? Are we more or less joyful as Americans than we were years ago? I don't know. But it's an interesting study because it appears to me that the scriptures point to a spiritual source for joy. Psalm 98 today, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song, let the hills sing together for joy. The creation is joyful. Hills singing together for joy. Is our joy connected to the natural world, the created world? And are we connected or disconnected from that? Isaiah 12 today, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Again, the image is water of joy from a spiritual well. Psalm 16, therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. In your presence there is fullness of joy. <clears throat> In your presence. Before Martin Luther's transformational understanding of God as a God of love and grace, his view of God was one of angry judge. One who punished wrongdoing in this life and in the next one who squashed joy because of all the guilt and shame induced by his view of God. But what about God as giver of joy? What about God as the source of joy? 
Not a God who offers constant happiness. Not a God who promises a perfect or pain-free life. But a God in whose presence there is love. There is acceptance for us as we are. There is a measure of peace. And there is a cup full of joy. It seems to me that as people of faith, we understand joy as a gift that's tied to gratitude, that's tied to how we give of ourselves, and that is tied to how we are connected to God, to one another, and to the natural world around us. What do you think? I close with one verse from Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 10. <clears throat> Apparently the people were experiencing some grief. And Nehemiah, and this verse says, Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen.